movie Ship of Fools earned him an Academy Award nomination, and his work on stage and films and movies has always pleased both critics and the public alike. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is the very talented Michael Dunn. <laughs> Your 11th visit is that that's a lucky that's number, right. isn't it? Starting the oldest in Cleveland, yes. Yeah. yeah, you're a man of so many talents. <laughs> do you, uh, there, there comes a time in, in certain uh, performers' lives if they do go in other directions where they can't uh, get the talent channeled in the right direction, they don't really know what to do because they do uh, so many things. Have you ever had that problem, Michael? I haven't had the problem, no. I've had it. Uh, I've had people say to me that I might have that problem. You know, people, the expression spreading yourself too thin. But uh, I think basically uh, creative drive is common to more or less all the things that we consider creative or performing arts. And I don't think it can be dissipated by using it in different ways. It becomes a matter eventually of uh, just sheer physical energy. How much time and energy do you have to give to different kinds of projects? You derive the most enjoyment from from which one? Be honest now. Uh, well, I I should think probably uh, either singing uh, with a, with an audience in person or acting with an audience in person. Both are more satisfying to me than than film so mm -hmm. far. But really, I derive my overall satisfaction from doing a little bit of everything. Uh, each medium has its own problems and its own particular rewards, and I think it's very stimulating to my acting craft, particularly, to be able to exercise it in different disciplines. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, for instance, there's a uh, in just technical problems. If you're doing a film. There's a whole different vocal technique involved in doing a film. It's mm -hmm. very down. It's, it's compared very to you to the way you would approach a sure. dialogue on the stage. You would have to. Speak so that everyone can hear you in pictures. It's Nobody just, ever it's conversational. Any, yeah. Nobody ever has any trouble hearing me in a theater, even though there may be scenes or passages in a scene that must appear to be conversational. Still, they can hear me in the back. Yeah. But if you use projection techniques like that on film, it would look like overacting. That's right. The sound man could handle it. He could turn it down or something like that. That's no problem. But it would be overblown by the intimacy of the screen. Have you done any pictures since you were here last? I just finished one um, in New York. Uh, we did a picture, fortunately, in New York. I'd love to shoot in New York. It's wow. a very exciting feeling. Well, we it was so very immediate. Um, we were shooting in the streets, actually, in the streets. We had How do you avoid people? Uh, they don't. Shoot the set. I don't mean avoid them, but they come around and they come in large numbers on the streets of New York. You know. Well, Does yeah. that get to be a problem? How do you handle it? It can get to be a problem physically, just of moving people around in it takes more time to set up the next shot or something like that just for the sheer crowds. But we found our, our spectators very cooperative, very, you know, the assistant director would ask for quiet and they'd be quiet all during the mm -hmm. taping. And they didn't, uh, millions of, millions, hundreds, I don't know, of young kids would hang around the set, you know, and, and this was out in the street, mostly down in the village in New York, and kids by the hundreds and maybe thousands in a couple of big shots would, uh, hang around the set, and uh, no rowdiness, no care. Do you suppose any of them wanting to get on camera? Did you encounter any of that? They didn't appear to. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't, nobody tried to, like, get in front of the camera and do yeah. a shot. Or what kind of that. film was it? Well, it's called The Apple Man, and uh, there's very little story to try to describe. Um, it's very much a mood kind of thing, you know, there's very little plot, and very little what you could call serious characterization, deep characters and everything. You play what? So, I play the apple man. Really? He's a guy, uh, he sells apples in the street. I, I thought that might but be it. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about it is that the, uh, I play a character who is a dropout, essentially. He was a, an associate or assistant professor of English at a university and got to where he couldn't handle the responsibility of fe feeling responsible for, for young minds and, and, and not being able to be responsible for other areas of their minds that were turning in ways he didn't like. So instead of combating it, he drops out. 
but he finds he can't drop out from this essential feeling that he is responsible for people, or he's responsible for everything that he's connected that to. That, that yeah, and it that. is. But the thing is, that if it's properly cut, it depends so much on the editing. Explain that. Explain that to, to the viewers. I don't think they, they know how important that is. And sometimes more work is involved there than in actually doing the film. Am I right? Well, in actual time, most pictures take much more time in the post-production. Um, there, there are three elements to making a picture in time. There's the preparation work, which involves uh, writing a screenplay, putting everything together. The unit manager has to put together a production schedule, a shooting schedule, what they call a day out of days, a daily schedule. Uh, the director has to work out his uh, scheme of how he wants to shoot the thing. They have to do all the casting, and the agents and the producers are screaming about contracts and everything. All this is preparation work. Then they have what they call principal photography, which is while they're actually shooting the film. It may take, uh, for instance, Ship of Fools to 52 days. That's actual shooting days. Mm -hmm. um, that picture in the old days would have been six or seven months, probably. Probably, yeah. Uh, this picture I just did, the Apple Man, took uh, about four weeks. And the post, the uh, cutting uh, work and all? The you got to figure work. it's going to be a minimum of three times as long as the shooting time. Michael, how close to the script do you stick when you do your... I, as an actor? Right. You, you always seem to be improvising. Play. You always seem to be improvising. Because he's so good at what yeah. he does. Well, it depends on the screenplay, and there's... Uh, for instance, in the Apple Man, we were encouraged to improvise to some degree. In Ship of Fools, no, word for word. Really? No improvising was allowed. Uh, they scream about one word. Um, in television, there's much more improvising than there is in mm -hmm. film, partly because you just don't have the time, maybe, to learn the thing. That's right. You know, so you learn the speeches and you get hung up, you don't want to stop, so you give what you remember was the sense of the speech. That's right. So uh, in a film, you have much more time to rehearse and go into the thing, and you have more time to go over and over it again with the other actors, and you're learning the lines. You got it down you have a chance, at least, if you approve the line, to get it down word perfect. Most of the time, in television, the writer is not there. So if you change anything, he's defenseless. You're right. He has nothing to You're do right. with it. You were a child prodigy. When did you, when did you begin playing the piano? Oh, in a way. Yeah. I guess I was about six. Look at those oh. long fingers. Yeah. Yeah, well, when I was playing, I used to be able to play tense, but my thumb was splayed out. Where the hell over here? I don't know. I can't do it now. You know, I, I had the same problem. I couldn't stretch tense, and I actually did manual stretching I did too, exercises. Yeah. And I can play a tenth in my left hand. That's two notes over an octave, by the way. Yeah. But in the right hand, I can't. I, can't. I never could play it yeah. another way right, no. How but long did you play? Did you stay with it long? I played until I was about 15. Um, I played, you know, some small concerts, recitals, and stuff like that. And I even got paid for times. But did you want to be a concert pianist? I don't have it in my mind, but um, the stuff I have that makes me short is a bone disease called chondro dystrophy, and among other jolly little things it does, it makes some very original designs in the bones, and uh, my elbow joints got kind of, <laughs> well, it was something the engineers would never have thought of, and uh, so the elbows got to where they wouldn't work, and uh, I had to quit then. And I was about 15 then. Before that, I had some for fun. You know, in church and in school, yes. and clubs and stuff like that. And I was so hung up on the music, when I had to stop the piano, I couldn't stop the music. Yeah. So that was when I started, the singing started to get more serious. And I kicked the place in the piano. And How about rehearsing? Were you, did you enjoy rehearsing and practicing? Yeah, you know, I was, uh, I guess I was a normally rotten kid. <laughs> <laughs> Most kids yeah. find the greatest excuses to get out of practice. But, but I love to play the piano. And I play... Well, when I first started, of course, when I was a little kid, I, I don't remember how long I played. I guess I must have played 45 minutes or an hour a day. Yeah. Something later I got to where I was playing three or four hours a day. But still, I was playing baseball, you know, and football and stuff like that. And I was in grade school until when I got in high school, the size difference was too much. But when I was in grade school, it didn't make that much difference. You know, I needed to practice so much that when I got home from school, my mother used to have a plate of cookies and a pitcher of milk on the piano. When I practiced till the cookies ran out, then I'd run out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back right after this with everyone. <laughs> 